everyone today we are going to discuss the topic gingiva from the subject of periodontics as we all know gingiva is the very basic and a must know topic from perio so let's start but actually before getting into gingiva we have to first understand what is periodontium what do you mean by the term periodontium so it's a dynamic structure that is composed of tissues supporting and investing the teeth okay and it comprises of four principal components this is what you have to remember okay it is comprised of your periodontium is comprised of four components and they are divided into two parts okay these four components are divided into two parts the first is your gingiva and the second is your periodontal ligament cementum and your alveolar bone together what we call them as the attachment apparatus okay so this is your periodontium gingiva periodontal ligament cementum and your alveolar bone now we'll show you a picture so this is the periodontium these are the four components of periodontium you have the cementum okay and then you have this is your periodontal ligament and then you have your alveolar bone okay and you have the gingiva so in today's session or in today's video we are discussing in detail about this component that is gingiva so let's see now gingiva is that part of the oral mucosa that covers the alveolar processes of the jaws that covers the alveolar processes of the jaws and surrounds the neck of the teeth and it's basically divided into two parts we have a clinical or a macroscopic part and we have a microscopic part so in this session we are discussing gingiva under these two major headings okay a macroscopic part and a microscopic part now let's get into the clinical or the macroscopic features okay so gingiva is divided anatomically into three parts that is your marginal gingiva your attached gingiva and your interdental gingiva okay so you can remember this it's very easy but if you want you can use the mnemonic aim okay a for attached gingiva i for interdental gingiva and m for your marginal gingiva so in this picture i'll show you this is your attached gingiva okay this portion will be your attached gingiva this portion will be your interdental gingiva okay this pyramidal like portion here will be your interdental gingiva and this that is surrounding the tooth in the same shape that is your marginal gingiva okay so attached gingiva interdental gingiva and your marginal gingiva now let's see about each of them in detail so first is marginal gingiva it is also called as your unattached gingiva or your free gingiva and it is what is forming your terminal edge or your border of the gingiva and it is surrounding the tooth in a collar like fashion we saw that in the picture right it is surrounding the tooth in a collar like fashion and the marginal gingiva almost has a width of around 1 mm and it forms the soft tissue wall of your gingival sulcus okay and it is located on to the enamel surface 1.5 to 2 mm coronally to the cej and apically it is demarcated from the attached gingiva by a shallow depression called as your free gingival groove okay so this is a picture here i'll show you this is the marginal gingiva here okay so marginal gingiva see coronally it is extending for around like 1.5 to 2 mm on to your cej and apically it is separated from your attached gingiva here is your attached gingiva and it is separated by this what is called as your free gingival groove okay so it is separated from the attached gingiva by this free gingival groove and it is surrounding the tooth in the collar like fashion like this so that is your marginal gingiva and that is what is surrounding you surrounding your gingival sulcus okay now coming to attached gingiva it is a firm resilient and tightly bound structure to the underlying periosteum of the alveolar bone and it is continuous with your marginal gingiva okay coronally it is continuous with your marginal gingiva and it is extending down up to your mucogingival junction okay and the basic functions of your attached gingiva is that it braces your marginal gingiva 
It allows for proper deflection of food. It allows a proper room for your placement of toothbrush. It definitely plays an important role in your aesthetics and also maintains your overall gingival health. Okay, overall gingival health. Now, this is your attached gingiva. Okay, this portion here is your attached gingiva. So, see here you can see the free gingival group. Here will be your free gingival group. So, this portion is your marginal gingiva. So, from this free gingival group up to your mucogingival junction, say this is your mucogingival junction. So, this portion is what you call as your attached gingiva. Now, moving on to the width of attached gingiva, it's a very important uh, viva question also. It is always greater in the anterior region as compared to your posterior region, whether it is your maxilla or your mandible. Always the width of attached gingiva is greater in the anterior region. See, in the maxilla, it is around 3.5 to 4.5 mm and in the mandible, it's only around 3.3 to 3.9 mm but still it is greater than the posterior portions because posteriorly even in the maxilla you have only 1.9 mm in the mandible you have only 1.8 mm this is basically in reference to the premolar region that is we are talking about okay posteriorly means around in the premolar region okay so with that we finished attached gingiva now we are coming to what is called as the interdental gingiva so interdental gingiva is occupying the gingival embrasure which are the interproximal spaces beneath the area of tooth contact and so the shape of interdental gingiva will be determined by the contact relationship between the teeth the distance between the contact point and the osseous crest and it will also depend upon the degree of recession so see this portion here is what is called as your interdental gingiva okay so in this picture i'll just brush up again this is your marginal gingiva okay this is your marginal gingiva and say here is your free gingival groove so from here this portion will be your attached gingiva up to your mucogingival junction up to your mucogingival junction will be your attached gingiva and here is your interdental gingiva this portion this embrasure here okay now we have to see what is coal what do you mean by coal this is also to be discussed under interdental gingiva so all that you have to remember is coal is a valley like depression okay it is a valley like depression that is connecting your facial and your lingual papilla so it confirms again to the shape of your interproximal contact area like your ging interdental gingiva and interdental papilla will be absent in case of midline diastema. This is an important point to note. Okay, interdental papilla will be absent in case of your midline diastema. So, this is a picture showing coal. See, I told you it's a valley like depression that is present between the facial papilla and the lingual papilla, right? This valley like depression here that is what you call as your coal. Again, in this picture also, suppose this is the facial papilla, this is the lingual papilla and this valley like depression here, you see this, that is what you call as your coal. Okay. Okay, so with that we have finished the macroscopic or the clinical features of gingiva. Now we are moving on to the second part of it, that is the microscopic features. So microscopic features, everybody knows, right? It's all about the epithelium and the connective tissue. So gingiva, it will have gingival epithelium and it will have a gingival connective tissue. So first let's see the gingival epithelium. The gingival epithelium is basically a stratified squamous epithelium and it comprises of epithelial tissue that is covering the external surfaces of your gingiva as well as the epithelium lining the gingival sulcus and also your junctional epithelium. So we all know right that is we have an oral epithelium, we have a sulcular epithelium and we have a junctional epithelium we have three layers of epithelium or three types of epithelium we have but before getting into those three types of epithelium we have to first see some cells okay there are some particular cells that we have to know about in the gingival epithelium so they're basically divided into two types they are the keratinocytes and the non-keratinocytes so these non-keratinocytes are further divided into four types okay there are four types of non-keratinocyte cells those are your melanocytes your langerhans cells your merkel cells and your inflammatory cells 
Now let's see a few lines about each of them. The first one are your melanocytes. So we all know melanocytes are nothing but your pigment synthesizing cells, right? They are specialized cells because they produce your pigment which is called as the melanin. Okay, and this melanin is what is responsible for giving that melanin pigmentation on your gingiva. So, where are they derived from? Embryologically, you derive them from the neural crest cells and they are located in the basal layer of epithelium. The location is important. They are located in the basal layer of epithelium and they produce, melanin is produced as granules called as melanosomes. Okay, they are produced as granules called as melanosomes. Okay, in this picture you can see, see this is the basal cells okay so in the basal cells you can see right there are melanocytes located there again if you look at this picture again these are your basal cells so the melanocytes are located there the pigment producing melanocytes are present on your basal cells and this is the clinical picture showing you the melanin pigmentation so you can see the melanin pigmentation here and all right so these are the melanocytes that are responsible for giving this color now moving on to the second type of cells, those are your Langerhans cells, okay. So these are dendritic cells and their main function, very important, they are responsible for your defense mechanism, okay, the defense mechanism. Suppose you have an infection, then these cells will act as your antigen presenting cells. So they are the main cells of your defense mechanism and they are derived from the cellular differentiation of your monocytes and they are located at your suprabasal layers, suprabasal layers. Your melanocytes were at the basal layers, these are at your suprabasal layers and they contain large granules called as berbic granules, okay. Now for you to remember this berbic granules, you can remember it as birbal, okay. Everybody knows birbal, right. He was the main advisor of the king Akbar and he was also the main commander of the army. Okay, so you can remember that way. Berbic granules are associated with the Langerhans cells and army. So that is your defense mechanism. Okay, so they are associated with your defense mechanism. So you can remember it that way. Now moving on to Merkel cells, they just have a sensory function. Okay, so with that we have finished the cells of epithelium. Now we are moving on to the three sections of gingival epithelium. Gingival epithelium is subdivided into three sections. I told you, right? There is a oral epithelium, a sulcular epithelium and you have a junctional epithelium. So we have to see in detail about all these epitheliums. Okay, so the first is your oral epithelium, right? So it consists of your stratified squamous keratinizing epithelium and it is covering the crest and the outer surfaces of your marginal gingiva and also the surface of your attached gingiva. So your oral epithelium is covering the surfaces of marginal gingiva as well as your attached gingiva. So you can remember something as OMA, okay? And the average thickness is around 0.2 to 0.3 mm. And it can be divided into the following cell layers. The oral epithelium consists of four layers of cells. Okay, four layers of cells. Those are, you have the basal cell layer or the stratum basal. You have the prickle cell layer which is called as the stratum spinosum. Then you have the granular cell layer which is called as the stratum granulosum. And you have a keratinized cell layer that is called as the stratum corneum. Okay, so you have to remember these in the order. So for you to remember that easily, uh, we have a mnemonic which says bad sprinters get cramps. Okay, bad sprinters get cramps. So B is for stratum basal, S is for stratum spinosum, G is for stratum granulosum and C is for stratum corneum. So let's see a few lines about each of them. The stratum basal or your basal cell layer, they have cylindrical or cuboidal cells, okay? And they are the ones that are in contact with the basement membrane, right? They are the basal cell layer. So they are in contact with the basement membrane and how do they attach themselves to the basement membrane? With the help of hemidesmosomes. Very important, okay? With the help of hemidesmosomes. Then you have the prickle cell layer. They are 
polyhedral in shape and why are they called as a prickle cell layer because they have decreased amount of mitochondria and they have short cytoplasmic processes these short cytoplasmic processes are spiny and that gives it that prickly appearance that is why they are called as a prickle cell layer okay and the cohesion between these cells are formed by your desmosomes okay here it was the hemidesmosomes the basal cell layers attaching to the basement membrane was your hemidesmosomes but the cohesion between the cells of the prickle cell layer is your desmosomes then you have the granular cell layer where they are you know flattened cells and they have very sparse round cytoplasmic granules with keratohyalin and also they have enzyme containing odland bodies and finally the topmost layer is your stratum corneum and they have tightly packed cornified cells so this is a picture see here you have the stratum basale it is attached to the basement membrane with the help of what you call as the hemidesmosomes then we have the second layer that is your stratum spinosum the interconnection is with the help of desmosomes okay desmosomes and then you have the stratum granulosum and you have the stratum corneum see again the picture showing hemidesmosomes hemidesmosomes are connecting the base of the cells with your basement membrane okay and then you have desmosomes that are connecting the cells in between okay the intercellular connection now coming to the sulcular epithelium it is the stratified squamous non keratinizing epithelium okay it is not keratinizing it is a non keratinizing epithelium that is lining your gingival sulcus okay that is why it is called as a sulcular epithelium because it is lining your gingival sulcus and apically it is extending apically it is extending up to the coronal limit of your junctional epithelium and coronally it is meeting the epithelium of oral cavity okay see this picture here is your gingival sulcus right the v shaped crevice so automatically the epithelium that is lining the gingival sulcus is what we call as the sulcular epithelium so the apical portion here you have the junctional epithelium starting right so the apical extension of your sulcular epithelium is up to this junctional epithelium part and on top it is meeting your oral epithelium here it is meeting your from this portion it is your oral epithelium so it is meeting the oral epithelium at the crest okay so that is what we said in this in this slide in the previous slide that is apically it is extending up to the coronal limit of junctional epithelium and it is meeting the epithelium of the oral cavity at the crest of the gingival margin and it is extremely important sulcular epithelium is extremely important because it acts as a semi permeable membrane injurious bacterial products and all can pass into the gingiva also tissue fluid from the gingiva can seep into the sulcus so it's semi permeable but unlike junctional epithelium sulcular epithelium is not heavily infiltrated by the polymorphonuclear cells okay so here is a picture now coming to junctional epithelium it's a stratified squamous non keratinizing epithelium and it is surrounding the tooth like a collar and it was very important because it's facing both gingival connective tissue and your tooth surface we have already done a very detailed video about junctional epithelium because junctional epithelium as such is a very important topic so you can find the link of the same in our description box below now coming to the last part so we have finished the gingival epithelium now we have to see what is there in the connective tissue right so coming to the connective tissue the connective tissue of gingiva we call it as the lamina propria okay lamina propria and it's divided into two layers you have a papillary layer and you have a reticular layer and there you have collagen fiber bundles around 60% and then you have cellular elements like your fibroblast around 5% then you have vascular elements like your blood vessels your lymph then you have nerves matrix around 35% and this connective tissue has both cellular and extracellular compartment okay and it is composed of the extracellular compartment is composed of fibers and your ground substance okay so with that we have come to the end of our topic gingiva now these are a few previous year questions that was asked they were asked what is periodontium we discussed that in the first slide right the four parts of periodontium you have the gingiva the cementum 
the periodontal ligament and your alveolar bone and then discuss in detail about the anatomical which is your macroscopic and histological features which are your microscopic features we have seen all that in detail and they have asked exclusively about the microscopic features of gingiva if you found our video informative please do not forget to like share comment and subscribe to our channel and if you have any queries please feel free to dm us at our insta page or you can also mail us at dentalschool4@gmail.com thank you